And I want to thank um, Bob Law for having us down here. Uh, I think it's very important uh, for black law enforcement to have a voice in the issues that go on in the black community. What is really key is that what we see on uh, mainstream media when they talk about oversight law enforcement and when they talk about um, a statewide special prosecutor. Black law enforcement organizations have been saying this for the last four or five decades, that something needs to be done with accountability of law enforcement. Now, we see the politicians, they have oversight in the banking system, they have oversight in uh, the automotive system, but one thing you will constantly fight is oversight in law enforcement. When you look at the Eric Gardner case, you had a video. You had the, the commissioner saying that it was a chokehold. And chokehold was against policy and procedure. You had the medical examiner saying it was a homicide. But the DA was unable to bring a bill to indict. Now, when we say you want an independent prosecutor and investigator, but nobody's talking about legislation to define what police criminality is. Because you can't bring somebody up on charges if there's no law to bring them up on charges on. So as law enforcement professionals, we say, any law enforcement professional that is certified by the state, which every uh, law enforcement in New York State, we are peace officers of the state. So we all get a certificate saying that we are peace officers of the state of New York. So that means we met certified training that was certified by the state. Now, if we violate that training, and if we violate the powers that's given us by the state to use deadly force, and we violate policy and procedure of the, of the department that we work in, we need legislation to define that and say it's a crime. See, because what the officer did, he violated policy, but it still wasn't a crime to violate policy and to violate training. So. When we talk about today is Martin Luther King's birthday, but there was a main goal, and the goal was to change legislation. So we have to define the legislation that we needed to make. We have to make what they're doing a crime, and we have to change the language from not police brutality, but police criminality, because what these officers are doing is a crime, and we have to, we have to use our language in that manner. Now, the next step is what? Statewide special prosecutor and an investigator. Now, the talk, the talk is you, you can't have your local DA investigate the local police department, no matter where you're at. You could be in New York City, you could be in Westchester where I live, you could be out in Long Island. Because a lot of times, the police culture and the police family, we are related. Yes. Cousins, nephews, yes. aunts, uncles all spread out yes. into different departments so when you have an investigator from the DA they come from the local police department so how can they investigate their own and then they have to try to preserve that relationship the ongoing because the DA needs the police department to investigate crime so they can bring charges so it, it is a bias and we know that but the problem is we can't get the politicians to act on it. Now, we just had Governor Cuomo come down, he met with the police unions. But what people don't know is that there was a young brother named Limhard who was shot and killed in Newburgh. And the Newburgh City Council voted for an independent investigator and prosecutor. They sent the request to Albany, and the same governor that's meeting with the unions denied 
Newburn, an independent investigator and prosecutor. So we have to understand the tricks that the politicians are playing because that's what they're playing on us. And now you have the union going back and forth, but it's all about reform. We have to pressure our elected officials. As a black law enforcement organization, we ring through the regular channels. You talk to your pastor, you talk to your black elected officials, you tell them what's going wrong, you tell them this, you tell them that, and nothing has happened. So right now, there are a lot of black law enforcement hoping that these young black brothers and sisters that are out in the street will continue to bring this to the forefront because we have no faith in our black elected officials or many of our pastors in our community because we have sat down with them over the years and nothing has happened. So now we are hoping that these young people continue, continue, continue to continue to agitate, continue to keep this on the forefront. And as law enforcement, we will gladly give you the tools that's needed because we know where the bodies are buried. We know the secrets of the policies and procedures because we were trained by them. We were trained. Last thing is we need to fight for residency in law enforcement. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We need to have our police departments to reflect the community that they serve. Earlier today, I had um, Al Jazeera News came up to Westchester County because we always, we always said that they are Ferguson's in New York. They are police departments that do not reflect the community. You have Yonkers, Yonkers, New York, which is the third largest city in the state of New York. Out of 410 officers, you barely have 15 black cops. This is in Yonkers. Mount Vernon, New York, which is a population approximately 90% black, with a black mayor, a black city council, a black board of ed, but they only got 20% black officers. So what we see in Ferguson, we have that in New York. So when they talk about Ferguson, the media, they're distracting you what's going on in your own community. And then you have certain leaders who will march in Washington, D.C., but won't march on the steps of the state capitol. But yet the same person in the state capitol is at his birthday party. Talk about it. Talk about it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Because the only way you're going to get legislation changed in New York is to get the governor to sign it. And, and Albany to move it. So let's not be fooled by what's going on. I hope that we will march in Albany and the force Governor Cuomo to put legislation in place. One more thing before I leave, the young people in um, Connecticut, when they had, the white man went up in the school and killed all the kids, Sandy Hook. New York State passed the toughest gun law in three months. In three months. We had over 200 Black men and women shot, shot, and killed by NYPD since I'm a duty outlaw. And not one piece of legislation has been passed. So when we talk about Black Lives Matter, we have to hold Governor Cuomo to the fire. Because if he could use his bully pulpit to pass a piece of legislation that made New York the toughest gun law overnight, and some Republicans didn't even read the legislation. They voted because they felt it was what? The right thing to do. We have to force those to do that the same when it comes to oversight and law enforcement. That is the right thing to do. And if Black Lives Matter, your next election, you will not be in office. Thank you very much.